Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason. Thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to be looking at a buy versus a DIY. Now both of these are 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, but which one should you go for? Now let's go ahead and start with the Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour battery. Now this is designed to be a drop in replacement for a lead acid battery. So if you had a lead acid battery with a similar capacity, you'd be around 60 pounds or a little bit less. This one comes in at 25 pounds, so that's pretty awesome. Now you have this really sturdy plastic case. The top is glued and screwed down. And if you shake it around, uh, you don't have any movement inside, so it feels pretty solid. Now you do have a removable handle on top, so you can carry it around easy or take it off if you don't want it. And you have two M8 bolts here. Now these are very similar to 516s just with a different thread pattern. So you can use 516 ring terminals underneath these connections. Now talking about the specifications on this battery, it should have a capacity of 1280 watt hours. It should be able to discharge continuously at 100 amps and charge up at 50 amps continuously. Now we will be extensively testing this later in the video, so stay tuned for that if you want to see those results. Now this battery does in fact have a BMS inside to protect against overcharge protection, over discharge protection, and short circuit protection, but the BMS does not have a low temperature sensor, so you can actually charge this up below 32 degrees. So we'll be testing that out and seeing what happens, so stay tuned for those results as well. Now you can connect this battery together in parallel with other batteries of similar capacity. You can go 200 amp hours, 300 amp hours, 400 amp hours, but you cannot connect these batteries together in series because the BMS cannot handle that high of a voltage. So you cannot connect it in a 24 volt battery or a 48 volt battery configuration. Now you can pick this product up on Dr. Prepare's website for $599 and it comes with a three year warranty. Dr. Prepare has provided a discount code for my viewers to drop the price down to $365. So you can pick it up at that lower price if you are interested in this battery. Now let's go ahead and talk about the DIY option. Okay, so here's a DIY option. This is my 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate build. Now this will have very similar capacity to the other battery, except for it's in a different form factor. I decided to put it in this plastic ammo case. Now, if you were gonna build something similar, you could choose exactly how you wanted to build it, but this worked really well for me. Now looking on the top, I have two Anderson power pole connections, a power switch, 12 volt cigarette plug, USB connections, and a voltmeter. Now that's just what works well for me. Maybe you guys wanna have an inverter. You can plug that all in and get that working as well. Now inside this battery box, I have four individual modules from battery hookup. They're 3.2 volts each at 100 amp hours, wired together in a 4S configuration to get a 12.8 100 amp hour battery. Now I was able to choose an affordable BMS option that had low temperature charging protection and a Bluetooth module. So you have the ability to connect to this with your smartphone so you can actually see individual cell voltages, the internal temperature, power going in and out, and the remaining capacity. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit less money, you can go with a BMS module that just has low temperature charging protection. So it's up to you, and that's what's nice about going with a DIY setup. Now, the base version of this build with all the parts that I've included comes in around $420. Now, with the Bluetooth upgrade, you're probably gonna spend a little bit more money, but you guys can check out all the parts that I used on my website. I also have a complete build video where you can follow step-by-step -step to put this together if you're interested. Now, looking in Inside, there's a lot of wire connections and it's pretty complicated so if you're not comfortable working with your hands or don't have any electronic experience you may want to stick with a buy it off the shelf option but if you have a lot of time and you are familiar with electronics you can follow the step-by-step -step guide to build this I just thought it'd be helpful to show you two different options now I mentioned earlier in the video I wanted to do some extensive testing on this let's go ahead and see what happens and see how it stands up against its rated specifications let's jump into it Okay, let's go ahead and start the first capacity test on this battery. We should see somewhere around 1280 watt hours or 100 amp hours. Now the inverter I'll be using in this test would be this Xantrix ProWatt 2000. It's a pure sine wave 2000 watt inverter. And I'll be running the load of this 250 watt heat lamp. That should be right around a 0.2C discharge. Now throughout the entire test, I wanna track all the power usage going out of the battery. So I plugged in this shunt on the negative line. I'm gonna leave my camera here as a time lapse. Let's see what happens as we start the test. Okay, so here are the results of the capacity test. Now my inverter shut off at 11 volts, but right before it shut off, we were able to get 100 amp hours. Now the test ran for five hours and six minutes. 
Okay guys, now that the battery is empty, I wanna go ahead and try charging it at the max charging limit, which is 50 amps. Now I have my circuit specialist 15 volt, 60 amp adjustable power supply here. I'm gonna try putting 50 amps in for about 10 minutes and see what happens. Okay, we're charging at 49.6 amps. I'm turn it up a little bit higher. Yeah, we'll do 50.3. Now, while that test is going, you guys may be wondering what the heck this complete wiring mess is. Well, I have two six AUG cables, which come into four sets of 12 AUG cables. And I have this charging cable because I charge up my other battery box. Uh, that one right there, it has four sets of Anderson power pole connectors on the top. And it's really easy to charge that way. But what I've done is I've come up with some alligator clamps that hook into these Anderson power pole connectors. I'm able to charge this battery at 50 amps. Okay, so it's been going for about 12 minutes or so. Go ahead and turn this down. I'm gonna go down to around uh, about 20 amps or so. Now I'm gonna let this charge at 20 amps for a couple hours. Battery should fill up pretty quick. We'll come back and check on it in a couple hours. Okay, so it's been about three and a half hours. The battery's fully charged. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and test the 100 amp discharge rate. Let's see if we can pull 100 amps through this battery without any issues. Now let me go ahead and show you what type of loads I have on the inverter for this test. Now I have 750 watts of heat lamps here, and then I have a 450 watt bottle warmer. Should be pulling around 1200 watts, maybe a little bit more through the inverter. Okay, so you can see right here, we're pulling about 102 amps from the battery. And you can see it's been going for two minutes so far. Let's see if we can hit 10 minutes without the battery shutting off. A few moments later. Okay guys, we hit 10 minutes. Very impressive, We've been pulling from 100 to 106 amps the entire time. Pretty awesome test. Okay, so pretty impressive results for such a budget battery. Remember, you can pick this up for $365. We were able to pull 100 amp hours capacity. We were able to discharge it at 100 amps and even charge it up at 50 amps. So everything worked fine with that testing. Now, if you remember the BMS module in here does not have low temperature charging protection. I always wanted to see what happens if we charge one of these up below freezing. So I wanna go ahead and throw this in the freezer for 48 hours, get the temperature really, really low, and then we're gonna do a full charging cycle on it to see if we lose any capacity. Now, I've always heard that if you charge up lithium iron phosphate below freezing, you get plating on the anode of the battery, which actually increases the internal resistance and damages the permanent capacity of the battery. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Two days later. Okay, it's been 48 hours of sitting in the freezer. Let's see what this is sitting at. Okay, two degrees Fahrenheit. I'm pretty sure the inside of this battery is cold. Let's go ahead and charge it up. Okay guys, I'm putting 15 amps into the battery and it's definitely taking a charge. So there is no low temperature protection while trying to charge this battery. Now what's really interesting is the battery is completely empty, but when I put 15 amps into it, the battery voltage jumps all the way up. So reacting a little bit differently than a warm battery. Now I wanna see if this causes any damage. Let me go ahead and go through a full charging cycle and then we'll do a capacity test afterwards to see if we had any damage. Okay, so the battery's fully charged and it's sitting at room temperature. Let's go ahead and do a capacity test. We're gonna be using the same inverter and the same heat lamp. I'll watch it with the time-lapse. Let's see what happens. Here it is, the inverter shut off at 11 volts. The battery has obviously recovered to 11.3 volts. We pulled 100 amp hours. So even after charging the battery at low temperatures, we still pulled full capacity. Wow guys, I was not expecting those results at all. Pretty interesting. I'd expect after having this in the freezer for 48 hours, charging at low temperature and then pulling a capacity test, I thought I'd at least see some sort of loss. You know, that was the expectation I had in the past, but it appears that Maybe it takes many cycles at cold temperatures to damage these batteries instead. Actually, I was so surprised that I did this twice, put it in the freezer another 48 hours, charged it at low temperature, and I still pulled full capacity. So if I have any lithium iron phosphate experts uh, watching the video, let me know what's happening here. How many cycles at low temperature would you start to see actual damage to the battery? Now, I always recommend you stick with the manufacturer guidelines right on the front of the battery. It says the operating temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees. So try to stick within those tolerances and you should be able to get the life cycles that are guaranteed on this battery. 
Okay guys, I have both products back here on the table. Now let's just do a head-to-head -head comparison between both of them. Now after all that extensive testing, we know this is a good product. Everything's going to work as advertised. And if you guys watch my original build video on this, you can see how this is tested. I don't want to put all that extra testing information in this video to make it too long. So let's go ahead and compare these head-to-head -head in a few different categories to see what you guys had purchased. If you should go with a buy or a DIY. Okay guys, the first category is the cost or value per dollar on each of these products. Now when you go with something off the shelf, you have to pay for the research and development, you have to pay for the manufacturing process, the delivery fees, everything like that. It's all built into the cost, so you're just going to pay more for a buy it off the shelf product versus a DIY project. Now a DIY project, all that research and development is you, know, you collecting all that information in your head. Uh, putting that together all your time and effort into this product. So which one's going to have a bigger value for the dollar? It's definitely going to be the DIY project. Okay, so category number two would be the quality or the manufacturing process of the product, whether it's going to be made by yourself out of a cardboard box, a wood box, a plastic box, or a professionally manufactured product. Obviously the win for this category is gonna to go to the buy it off the shelf. Now there are some really, really great craftsmen out there that can make a really nice uh, DIY project. This one's not absolutely amazing. I've seen some pretty cool stuff out there, but if you're going for pure quality and compact design, the buy it off the shelf definitely wins this one. Category number three, how rewarding is it as you work on this project or install it or purchase it? Well, when you purchase a product like this, definitely can be rewarding to know that you have something up and running. Uh, it fulfills a task or something that you need to accomplish. But when you build something yourself like this project here, I'd say you definitely have more of a rewarding feeling. You've basically assembled something out of nothing. And if, especially if it's successful, you feel really good about it. So definitely want to say the DIY project, if it's successful, is definitely going to win the rewarding category. Okay guys, category number four is the ease of use or assembly. Now when you buy something off the shelf, it's usually just a drop and replacement. You hook up your positive and negative battery terminals and you're good to go. There's no other things you have to worry about. The BMS is going to handle everything inside. Now when you go with a DIY project, of course you have to build the project and put everything and then you have to make sure everything's working. It's going to take so much more time than just buying something off the shelf. So for ease of use, it's definitely this guy is the winner. Buying it off the shelf is definitely going to be the easiest thing to do. Okay guys, this last category is warranty and support. Now when you purchase a product from a reputable company, of course you have a warranty like this product does have a three year warranty and you have a support group, you can send them emails, you can uh, call them on the phone, find out what the problem is if something's not working properly. So you have a couple different routes when you go with a buy it off the shelf option. However, when you go with a DIY product, you're basically the support group. You can go to online forums and find a little bit of information, but because you put it together and not everyone knows your exact setup, you kind of have to uh, you know, be your own support team. Now, of course, there are individual warranties for components inside. Maybe the you know, batteries inside have a warranty or certain things on have some sort of return policy, but usually it's modified in a way that they're not returnable. So the winner for category five, the warranty and support group is definitely gonna be a buy it off the shelf option. Okay, so there you have it, two different products head to head. You have a buy versus a DIY. Now, of course, this whole video is kind of based around this Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Dr. Prepare did send this out for review. I thought this would be a really cool way to kind of just show it off and compare it to other options, especially if you have a DIY option. Remember, you can pick this up for $365 for the next 10 days. There is a discount code in the video description, so uh, make sure you pick that up during that discounted period. Remember, the price will go up to $599 after that, which is a little bit expensive for the features on this battery, especially because this does not have low temperature charging protection. Now, if you look on Amazon, there are a ton of batteries just like this one that don't have low temperature charging protection right around that $365 mark or a little bit cheaper. So if you happen to miss the discount code on this one, go ahead and check out those ones. You should be able to find something very similar to this battery. Now, if you guys have any questions about either of these products, especially the Dr. Prepare, throw a comment down below. What did you guys think about the comparison and what would you do? Would you buy a product like this or would you build a product like this? Let me know what you guys want to do. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Super excited for future content on my channel. Hopefully you guys are too. We'll see you guys in the next video.